Hey, what's up, guys? Um, we trying to just get comfortable here. I'm trying to test this lighting on my bedroom. Um, it's probably the quietest, quietest part of the of the apartment. Um, but um, what's up? Um, I haven't made a video in a while. I even on my Instagram, I haven't really um, spoke to any about anything or. You know, I've been pretty MIA. Um, a lot has happened. Uh, so, you know, I just decided to grab some coffee and um, and just sit down and talk about a topic that you could probably have a good idea of what it is based on the title of the uh, of this video. Um, it's just... Um, we're going to talk about miscarriages and we're going to talk about why people don't talk about it, um, the consequences of it, um, how it feels, um, and my opinion and how I dealt with it before and how I'm dealing with, I'm dealing with it now. And, um, this isn't by any means a video of telling people how to feel and how to react when it comes to the situations. It's more of, I wanted to make this video because I feel like we need to talk about this topic more. I feel like women who are going through this all over the world need to know that they're not alone because when something like that happens to you, you feel like you're in a little box and you're the only person in that box. So with that said, let's just get right into it. Um, wow, where do I start? Um, last year, um, we decided that we wanted to have a baby. So we went for it, you know. And um, and we got pregnant. It was um, I will never forget that day. Um, <laughs> just buying the pregnancy test, and my period was a few days late, like three, four days late. And coming home, I remember buying um, the dollar store pregnancy test. I bought like four or five of them, and came home, and you know I took a test and it was positive and I just started crying it was just I couldn't believe it it was I mean I know we were trying but it happened so fast the first try the first month um I felt so lucky I felt so oh my god it's just it was just a such a great feeling um so that happened you know found out we're pregnant um i was about four weeks and three days when i found out it was great you start everything that you need to start um at that point i had to uh, make sure that my insurance was working properly because i had just moved to florida so um working with the insurance getting a new doctor because um i didn't have a doctor here in florida and um and in that process of all that, you're making your appointments and and waiting for all the paperwork to take place for your insurance and all that. Um, you know, I waiting for all of that and waiting for my doctor's appointment. Would they suggest to go after like what week? Um, I think seven or eight, because that's usually when they can see a baby and also. Uh, hear and see the heartbeat um so we were not worried you know i wasn't getting sick i had cravings um but i was i didn't have nausea my boobs were freaking huge but i was feeling good i was feeling so fantastic um besides feeling tired um i was feeling so great and um and one day all of a sudden it was a sunday i will never forget it was eight o'clock at night and um, I was watching TV and I got up to go to the kitchen and when I just felt 
something coming down. And when I looked, I was bleeding. So obviously, you know, you just, everything, it's like this rush, it goes through your mind and you're like, what the hell is going on? What is happening? And, um, and then I called my boyfriend and told him what was happening. He was working and he said, just, you know, go to the emergency room. And that's what I did. It was like around 8.30 at night, got to the emergency room. Um, they took me in right away. Um, they did a sonogram, they did a blood test. And the blood test for my levels, uh, for the time, which is also another thing. I thought I was uh, eight weeks or so. Um, eight, nine weeks, no, about nine weeks, almost 10. But the sonogram measure six and a half weeks. And, um, but the hormone levels were on point with the size of what they saw. But they said, we gotta wait and we'll give you, come back in 48 hours. Um, I wasn't bleeding a lot. Um, I was just potting on and off, went home, but the next day, I completely miscarried. Um, you know, I went back to the hospital like they told me to go. Um, they did another sonogram and then by then there was nothing there. Um, there was no baby, there was no yolk sac, what they call it. And uh, my levels had dropped tremendously. My, my hormone levels dropped a lot so already there you know i had a different doctor that day so he told me that um it was gone it was done i was devastated i was just you know i don't you guys know i work out a lot i um and i even though i stopped lifting weights throughout the pregnancy what i did continue doing was cardio and i remember blaming myself so much because that morning I got up and I went to the gym and I got on the treadmill and and I ran I ran two miles um I'm not a runner but you know I was I was feeling good my father my body was feeling great and for some reason I'm not a runner even before finding out I was pregnant I wasn't running I would always just get on the stairmaster or a stepper but for some reason it just felt good to run throughout that time and I would just run 20 minutes max half an hour um, but I just blame myself so much so much just thinking what if I didn't do that cardio that day maybe if I would have just stayed home and I wasn't working then but I would just walk a lot and um, you know you just blame yourself and you question every single step every single movement every single scenario you replay it in your head and you try to make sense of it um a few days after that or like a week after that was my actual doctor's appointment that i originally had scheduled as my first visit and we went explained to the doctor what happened he did another sonogram everything was good my body did what it had to do which is always good um and then he just said, you know, shit happens. Um, don't blame yourself. This is normal. For what I see, everything looks normal. You are 35 years old, which is the only thing we can say it's going against you. But other than that, um, you should be fine. You know, give it a little time and then try again. Um... You know, you're going home. After that, you go home. And I know he said there's nothing wrong with me. But sometimes you wish that there was something wrong. So that at least you know. Because it just feels like, but well, if there's nothing wrong, if I didn't do anything wrong, why did this happen? And... And it's just so crazy. And when that happened, that was last year. Um, it will be 
two years now at the end of July. I mean, a year now uh, towards the end of July. Um, I wanted to make this video then, but I wasn't ready. I feel so guilty. You feel so guilty. You feel so embarrassed. You feel ashamed. You feel broken. As a woman, you feel like, wow, this is my purpose. And my body can't even do that. I mean, you, you blame yourself for waiting so long to have a baby. And then you feel like, well, what if I would have had a baby when I was in my 20s? Maybe everything would have been okay. But because I'm waiting so long, I don't know now what my body is doing. So you feel like it's a fight against time. You're fighting against your body. And then you even question the fact that, you know, do you want to try again? It puts a lot of stress on your relationship. You know, um, you know, you as a female, you think about yourself, the pain that you're going, not just physically because everything you know every time you go to the bathroom you're reminded that you're not pregnant um every time you are in pain you're reminded that you're not pregnant but it puts a lot of stress on your relationship because we don't think about our partner the same way as you know we think we're the ones going through it but we don't think about what they're going through and it is tough because men go through some shit too you know they have to deal with the loss of a baby plus you they have to deal with your emotions your hormones being all over the place it's a it's a roller coaster it's like you will never imagine one day you're happy and the next day you're just a hot fucking mess and um you know after that it's hard to you say, okay, we're going to try again, start tracking everything, let's do it. And when that happens, it's not always as smooth. And because I got pregnant the first time right away, you're thinking, oh, the second time is going to be the same. And no, it's not the same. You know, circumstances just happen, life happens. And it took us eight months to get pregnant again. Eight months. Every single month you get in your period. And when you're trying to get pregnant, eight months, it's a long fucking time. People, maybe I'm saying this and I know there's people out there that who have been trying for a long time, years without success, people who don't even get pregnant. You know, I know I'm, I'm, I'm lucky that I at least get pregnant, um, but eight months is a long time. So we finally find out we get pregnant. I remember shit that day we, I was like, I don't know. I'm just gonna, we bought some tests. Um, I remember we went to the gym, we trained legs. It was a uh, really, really heavy lit workout. It was crazy. Um, I was actually dieting, dieting and, and training um, because I wanted to do a photo shoot to um, make some business cards and for personal training and stuff like that. So I've been training really hard, I was doing a lot of cardio and uh, my calories were a little low and all that um, because you're trying to keep life going because if you don't do that, this whole trying to get pregnant thing will consume your life, your relationship and everything that is around you. So you try to make things as normal as possible, but also knowing that you're still trying. So, so I was doing all of that. Uh, I remember we went to the store after, um, after the workout and went to the store, dollar store again. And I grabbed two tests just for the sake of it. My period was four days late, but my period, you know, my cycle, it's usually within, with like, what, 28 days, 31 days. It, it could be either way. So, um, I wasn't um, thinking anything of it. So, we got home. 
And I remember get, getting home and running to the bathroom right away. Right into the bathroom, first thing I did was take a test. And I didn't even put that test out quick enough and it turned positive. And I couldn't believe it. And I came out of the bathroom holding the test. And my boyfriend was looking at me and he was expecting a negative test because we've had so many negative tests that at this point we were like, this isn't gonna happen. Um, so I just lifted my arms with the test in my hands and in my hand and I was just like, babes, it is positive. And he was like, nah, you're kidding. And I was like, no, look, two lines, dark, super dark. And um, then I remember after that, I said, I think I still might have, I can pee a little bit more so we can take the second test. And, um, and just, you know, make sure that this is real. Um, and I went, I took the test and this time I took the test and he was right in front of me while I was um, doing everything. He was like, you know, we were even joking about it. He was like, I don't really want to see the whole process. But I was like, no, 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 see if, just watch me do it so you can see how cool this is. And they just turned positive right there again. So we hugged and we cry and, and we were so thankful. And, and then right after that, he was like, well, no more gym for you. Because we said after what happened the first time that we were not going to work out. Uh, at, at least I wasn't going to work out um, if I got pregnant again. Because we don't know what happened even though i was totally against it because you know guys you know that i work out six days a week my body is used to working out and doing cardio and being active and even my doctor told me he was like you know we tell pregnant women to stay active to do um cardio um now i don't want you to be lifting crazy weights but you can still do your stuff and there's nothing you did that cost us you know but I wanted to make my boyfriend happy. My mom, too, was the first one to be like, just, just stay home, chill, relax. You do too much and you hear all these things. And the thing is that deep inside, when you hear all these comments, it makes you feel like what happened the first time was your fault. And you don't want to feel that way. So you say to yourself, you know what? I'm going to stop doing all those things. I'm going to drink one cup of coffee a day. I'm going to eat all the foods that are good for me. I'm going to take all my vitamins. I, I'm going to walk maybe 20 minutes, if so, if that. I'm going to rest. I was taking naps. So if I'm that we're pregnant, good. We'd make our doctor's appointment. By the time we made the doctor's appointment, we were supposed to be seven weeks. We go to the doctor's appointment and it's measuring barely five weeks. And the doctor said, let's give it two weeks because it might be too early. Maybe you ovulate her a little late. They couldn't see a baby. They, could, they saw I was pregnant. I was definitely pregnant. It was, the baby was or whatever implanted, it was in the right place. Um, so those were good news, but we didn't get to see a baby. We didn't get to see a heartbeat those two weeks in the meantime he sends me to get blood work to make sure that my hormones are doing what they're supposed to do so um in those two weeks the longest two weeks of my life i um i went to get my blood test i went on a friday i was supposed to get the second test 48 hours and your levels or your hormones are supposed to double every 48 hours when you're pregnant up to like 12 weeks of pregnancy um so i went on a friday did my first test then um that weekend i spotted a little bit i spotted it was a little bit just brown spotting and i called my doctor and um actually i spoke to his assistant and she said you know look this is normal if you're not having any pain if you um are not actually bleeding or you know filling up a uh, a pad like a regular period you should be fine so i said to myself you know what i'm just gonna take it easy i'm just gonna relax i know that this could be normal um so 
that's what I'm gonna do. Just relax. Let's take my test. Took the test on a Friday. Went back on Monday to do the second test. And um, so that was three days actually instead of 48 hours. Um, so took the text, second test, then I had to wait for those results. The first test, the hormones level were like around 6,000 and something. Um, so then they were supposed to at least double, so 12, 13,000, right? The second time. Uh, the spotting stop, it was just like one day for a little bit, no pain, I was good. Then did the second test when we got the results, the levels did not go up the way they were supposed to. Um, they increased, but it was very low. So uh, the doctor's assistant said, look, they didn't double, but they did go up. So let's not get discouraged. And then when you come in to see the doctor, then we'll take it from there. Um, then I, my, the two weeks passed, I had to go back to see the doctor. And then when he does the sonogram, um, it's measuring the baby or the sack is measuring six weeks and change there was barely a baby in there so from the time that i was there it just didn't go there was no heartbeat either so the doctor said um this is going to be a miscarriage again and guys that Hearing that for the second time, was numbing because I couldn't believe that almost a year later, I was going through that again. And, um, You know, he sent me to get a, a, a sonogram with a, with a technician, you know, because he was doing the sonogram himself, even though he was pretty sure. But he was like, I'm going to send you to get a sonogram to, at, at an actual um, ultrasound place. Um, they're more experienced. They have better equipment. So just to make sure. So I was at the doctor on a Thursday. And I couldn't get an appointment until Tuesday the following week for the sonogram. Um, in the meantime, I asked the doctor, okay, if this is not a viable pregnancy, what are my options? How do we go about it? And he said to me, well, it is up to, it is up to you. You can either wait until your body does it on its own and gets rid of it. We can either give you a medication to start the process. Or we could do a DNC, so it's more like, you know, when people get abortions and stuff like that, that's what they do. They go in, they take everything out themselves. Me, personally, obviously, I didn't want anything invasive uh, because I just want my body to do what it's supposed to. And and also because the recovery is, is shorter and you don't have to be under anesthesia and any of that. Um, so... So I, he said, but it's up to you how long you're going to walk around like that. Because sometimes it takes weeks. I've heard of people that it, it took them two to three weeks for their body to miscarry on their own. And, um, you know, but I, I didn't mind because I, I don't know why I felt like I needed to go through that. I don't know. I just felt like I I had to go through that process on my own. And um, so what happened was, like I said, the appointment uh, with the doctor was Thursday. My sonogram or ultrasound was on Tuesday. Uh, but that Saturday night before that Tuesday, um, I had really sharp pains. I had a lot of... Um, cramps really strong cramps and I already knew um so I remember I went to sleep and um the next day Sunday morning I woke up and um it was like around 11 30 and I um I you know went to the bathroom and I was bleeding 
So I already knew that it was going to happen that day or sometime throughout the day or going into the next day. So I remember calling out of work and I had, I was, I was working that day, but I had three days off after that. And, um, so that really helped. So I stay home just, you know, I was in a little bit of pain, but I was better prepared this time because the, the time, the first time it happened when I went to the hospital, they didn't give me anything, no painkillers or anything. They just sent me home and they just said, come back in 48 hours. So I had no idea what to expect. And, um, and it was very painful. It was very, very painful. So if you've been through that, you know, that is super painful. So this time around, we were prepared. I have my painkillers. So I try to tolerate the pain as much as I could. Um, but at some point, I just had to take some pills and um, and I fell asleep. Fell asleep and then woke up in the middle of the night and that's when it all, when it all happened. Um, but um, all that happened and then, you know, I, that, that week I had my follow-up doctor's appointment because of that ultrasound that he sent me to get went back to the doctor and that was it everything was gone my body did what it had to do um which is good you know um and um you know we spoke about reasons and you know guys i there's no reason i am healthy and shit happens you know um call it bad luck or maybe good luck because sometimes your body knows when it's not a good baby and and it knows that it shouldn't take it too far so it decides to stop it right there and just get rid of it um but you know it's it's still pretty fresh because it just happened um a week ago a week ago yesterday and um you know i thought about making this video so many times before and even this whole week i sat in the room just contemplating should i make it should i not make it but you know what we shouldn't feel embarrassed because this has happened. We shouldn't be ashamed. We shouldn't feel like we're less than any other women who are out there having kids um, all the time. Um, I know that eventually I will be a mom. It's just not my time right now, you know. Um, You know, I, this hurts a lot. It hurts a lot. And I just want you to know that if you're going through this or if you went through this, don't be embarrassed because you're not alone. And we should talk about this. Miscarriages should not be a taboo. You know, one out of four women have a miscarriage. And, and that's a lot and that's just counting the ones who really reported because a lot of women miscarry and they don't even know they were pregnant you know so this is more common than we know and if we don't open our mouth and we don't say anything about it it's going to remain taboo it's going to remain that subject that nobody talks about and i feel like that's why and that's that. That's why. Uh, that's one of the reasons why we feel so ashamed and embarrassed to talk about it, because we don't hear about it, because not enough people come out and say it. And guys, people like Gabrielle Union, Michelle Obama, Pink, um, who else? Oh man, there's so many people out there, and I'm talking celebrities that have been through this, and they're they're very open about it and and we should be too we should talk about it 
because I know that for me, it makes me feel better when I share my story. When I tell people, look, I lost a baby, not once, but twice. And shit happens. And my life is not perfect. Especially when people are out there judging people's lives because you don't know what people are going through. And just know this, as a female, as a woman, just know that you are so strong. You are so strong and that if this is happening to you, it's not your fault. There's nothing you did wrong. There's nothing you could have done to prevent it either. Once it happens, you just have to let it happen. Um, you know, I'm thankful that I had the chance to say I was pregnant twice, even if it was for a short period of time. Um, I've never felt so blessed in my life. I never felt so empowered like at those moments. And I want that to continue. You know, I want to still feel empowered even though I'm not pregnant because just because I'm not pregnant now doesn't mean I'm not going to be pregnant again and that I'm not going to have that chance to be a mom and, and to grow a little person inside me and to be able to just say, you know what, all those sad moments led me up to this great victory. And I want you to know that, that if you're going through this, you're not alone. And if you're watching this video right now and you feel like you wanna share your story, you could do that. Do it in the comments below because I know that for me, it helps me when I do it, when I talk about it. Um, so, just speak up, you're not alone. Just, you know, these certain moments in which we have to stay together, even if we don't know each other, but just by sharing your story and what's happening, you're letting me know, I'm letting you know that we have this that we got this, that we can move on, that it's not the end of the road, that there's a light at the end of the tunnel, and that maybe right now it's not our time, but eventually it will be. And by then we will be ready. And we will have the most beautiful, beautiful baby. And a baby that his or her purpose, it's so great. That right now we don't understand it, but then we will. By then, when that moment comes, then we will understand why all of those things happened before. Because we needed to have that special baby. That one baby that, who knows, might change the world. We don't know. And we probably will never know while we're going through this process because it's hard to understand it's hard to comprehend and it's it's hard to deal with this but just grieve in your own ways just you know do what you need to do to feel better you know and just do you you know until then be happy live your life and Just love yourself. Just love yourself because you're worth it and you're you're enough. And um, thank you for watching this video. And I'm sorry that it's so long, but you know, thank you and I love you. Let me know what you think of this, what your thoughts are of this, your experiences with this, and um, you know, we need to talk about this. A little bit more so I hope this helps this helped 
right now I feel so relieved. I feel so good that I actually finally share this um, with the world pretty much. So thank you for being a part of this, of my journey. And I will talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.